Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak and welcome to the ninth video in our free Greenland paddle building series where we're gonna cover a couple different methods for rough shaping the blades. Now remember, this is a series, so if you haven't done this already, make sure that you go back and at least watch the introduction video. I'll throw a link up on the screen for that right now and you can find the entire playlist with all these videos in order here on the channel. You can also find this entire series for free without any commercials on my website. And then as always, if you want to support the free content that we put out here, think about picking up a set of our paddle plans, checking out our skin on frame boat building courses, buying your next piece of paddling gear from us, or just making a donation. You can find all that stuff on our website and there are links in the video description below. And of course, if you have any thoughts or any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. All right, enjoy the video. So next we're gonna rough out the shape of the blade with a power planer or if you're fond of hand tools and you have one of these, you could use a draw knife. Now, I would never use a block plane or a spoke shave for this work because all we're looking to do right now is just get rid of a bunch of material and these are designed for finer work. And if you exhaust your arms block planing this part of the process, you're not gonna have enough energy to do a really good job on the next step. So starting out with the power plane, if you're gonna be using this tool, you wanna change how this is clamped down to your workbench. You wanna slide this out so almost half of it is sticking over the edge right here. And then I'm gonna set another clamp back here, tighten it down nice and tight. And the reason we're doing this is because when you're carving this with a power planer, you're gonna be carrying this significantly onto the loom and you wanna have room to feather out of this cut without bumping into your clamps. Now, just a couple things to mention about the power planer before we get started. If you haven't used one of these before, I would highly recommend that you get yourself some scrap wood and you practice making this type of a cut before you try it on your actual paddle. And you're gonna be making these cuts with the plane on a medium to aggressive setting. And the reason for that is because this is a rolling bevel, the actual straight line drawn between any two points has a little bit of a valley in the middle. And so if you try to set this to its finest setting, it's gonna have a really hard time making any kind of a cut at all. So if you're new to this, I would recommend that you start on a 32nd of an inch. And then as you build more and more Greenland paddles and you get better technique, you can try to get closer to a 16th of an inch, which goes faster and actually makes the cut a little bit better, especially up by the shoulders. And then finally, as we're cutting and we get close to our finished edge thickness, you can back this off to a very fine setting just so you don't cut too deep. So pausing for a quick update, there's a couple things that I recently started doing that really help to dial in the accuracy of these power planer cuts, which is nice because the more work that you can do with the power planer now, the less work you're gonna have to do with the block plane later. So the first one is we're gonna make a couple marks on the loom here. So when we come in with the power planer, you know exactly how deep you can go without going too far. So the first one is that you're gonna set your combination square to exactly a quarter of an inch and you're gonna hold it vertically like this, and then right down in this corner on the shoulder, you're gonna make a mark. So that's a quarter inch down, right here. And then looking at this from the opposite angle, you're gonna make the same mark on the other side, and you wanna use a sharp pencil for this. We're not gonna use a Sharpie for this mark. And then you're gonna reset your combination square to exactly three eighths of an inch. And then we're gonna mark across the top surface. So going to go on the opposite corner here and then same thing on the other side right here once again this is a quarter inch down and three-eighths of an inch over and now when you're coming down the line with your power planer you can cut as close as you want to these lines as long as you don't cut into them once again you are going to leave these lines but if you want to you can get close to them and that's going to save you some extra work later on now, the other thing I've been doing lately that's been really helpful is just making witness marks all the way down the length of the blade. That way, when I'm carving with the power planer, I can see exactly how close I'm carving to this line because we're gonna be getting pretty close here, although sometimes, especially if you don't have good light, it's hard to see exactly how close you're getting while you're working. And so, if you just get yourself a pencil like this, you can just go all the way down the blade, make a bunch of little tight marks, doesn't matter how you do this, you just wanna have a bunch of them. And now, when you're cutting with your block plane or you're cutting with your power plane, you're gonna be able to see a lot easier exactly how close you're getting to this line in the middle. 
So I've gone ahead and carved one face just so you can see what we're aiming for. And what we're looking to accomplish for most of the length of the paddle is you want to try to plane this to about an eighth of an inch away from the black line on the edge and about a quarter to a half inch away from the black line on the top. And then coming back to the root of the blade where the shoulder is, you're probably going to be more like a quarter of an inch away from the black line on the sides and about a quarter of an inch away from the black line on the top. So the best way to understand this is just to watch me do it. So I'm just going to fire up the power planer. And then I'm going to back this off to a finer setting. And if you notice while you're doing this that you're cutting too steep and you're leaving too much up top, just change the angle of your hand a little bit to be shallower or vice versa if that's the problem. So taking a look at what I accomplished here, looks like I'm about an eighth of an inch off the line at the edge back here, which is perfect. A little more than a quarter up here, which is still fine. I'm about a quarter of an inch down the blade, a little bit wider down here. And that's what you want to do. Now, taking a look at a different paddle for a moment, this just happens to be a laminated paddle, and I want to show you this whole procedure one more time from a different angle. That way you can really see how I'm working my plane. All right, so just in case that wasn't clear from the angle you're looking at, when I did this, I only took about three swipes the full length before I came forward about six or seven inches, and then I took about three more swipes, and then I came forward six or seven inches. But exactly what you do here just depends on how deep your power plane is cutting and the technique you're using. So the most important thing to think about is that you wanna be monitoring the black line on the side, and if it looks like it's cutting too deep or not deep enough, you want to modify your technique. So taking a look at what we just did from the end here, the finished thickness in the middle is about 9 16 and the finished thickness of the blades on the edges at the tip are just a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. And honestly, this is a little bit too far. If you get a lot of experience building Greenland paddles, you can go this narrow and it's gonna save you a little bit of work with your Bach plane. But if this is your first or your second paddle, you wanna be at least a quarter of an inch thick at the outside edges here, and 5 16 is a little safer. And then coming to the middle of the blade, about halfway between the tip and the shoulder, Looks like I'm about three eighths of an inch off this center line right here. Anything between a quarter and a half inch is acceptable. And then over on the edge, it looks like my edge is 
once again, right about a quarter inch thick. And then coming back to the root of the blade, it looks like I'm about a quarter of an inch from the center of this black line to the edge of the cut. And then down here on the side, I'm about 3 16 of an inch from the center of the black line to the edge of the cut. Although if you can get closer to the black line back here, that's even better. The more important thing here is you want to try to plane almost exactly to these layout lines that you made with a pencil because that's going to save you significant work with a block plane later on in the process. All right, so this next demo is going to be a little bit brief because to be honest, I'm not the best person to be teaching you how to do this exclusively with hand tools. I understand the basic concepts, but I've always done most of my carving with power tools. So if you really want to get into doing everything by hand, I would recommend checking out some videos on the proper technique for using draw knives and spoke shaves. But just to give you a brief introduction here, this is a draw knife. It's basically just an exposed blade that's got a couple handles on each end. And it's meant to be used bevel up, which means that you can see the bevel right here while you're using it. And if you're going to try to take off large amounts of material on a piece like this, a draw knife is going to be a much better tool than a spoke shave, which is going to cut a lot slower. I also find that for beginners, sharpening and setting spoke shaves properly is a little bit tricky. So anyways, starting out with this draw knife here, you always want to plane from the end of the paddle blank back towards the center. Because if you do it the other way, there's a chance you might grab this grain and split out a big chunk. Now, also like I mentioned before, this is gonna work a little bit better if you're doing it on a vertical grain paddle blank. So, just to give you an idea of how this would work, And I'm actually putting so much force on this right now that I'm moving my table a little bit, so I'm not gonna do much more of this. The other thing that makes a big difference if you're carving with draw knives and spoke shaves is to build a workstation specifically designed for that that's called a shaving horse. Basically, it's sort of this weird sawhorse that you straddle and it has a clamp on it and it allows you to make the best use of the natural ergonomics of your body while you're cutting. So anyways, that's the basic idea and you would be doing the exact same thing that I showed you with the power plane. 